I picked up this... I picked up this thing from the thrift store. It's very, um, floral. Also, it's in perfect condition. Well, except for all the dirt and germs going on. But that's to be expected. It was actually in even better condition, but for whatever reason, no, Sniffledorf no, no. keeps trying to it chew on it. Ow. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Sniffledorf. He's already chewed up the sides a bit. You can see some of his little nibble marks there. Or maybe not. So I try to keep it hidden from him. It's made of nice, sturdy wood. Now that's quality. But the best part about this box is that it sings. It's a music box. <laughs> I love it. There's lots of storage space. There's two drawers on the bottom. Never mind. That's just one. I can, in... can I fit into this? Oh, oh. Did he open the he op Oh yeah. my god! I knew he could open drawers. He's so smart. Silencio, por favor. And there's these fancy double French doors. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Actually, they don't have glass on them. They're just plain old American doors. They've got a nice snap to them. Oh. And inside, there's a lot more storage. I did a modern spooky thrift store makeover last month, and you guys really seem to like it, so I've decided to give this little music box a modern spooky makeover as well. Alright, so here we are. There's not a lot of surface area to paint on, so I'll have to work with that. It almost looks like a miniature armoire, and I kinda like that. Fancy smancy. First thing I'm gonna have to do is try to clean off years of mold and neglect. <laughs> Just trying to kill all of these dust mites with some acetone. My time has come! The acetone also managed to help rub off some of that lovely floral disaster. It almost looks like someone painted this before me, grew out of the roses phase, and decided to discard it at the goodwill. Not gonna lie, I've discarded a few projects there myself. <laughs> the vines came off pretty easily. The flowers themselves, though, were being a little stubborn, especially the little red polka dot centers. They're refusing to be evicted, but you know the dark side doesn't take no for an answer. Get on out of here. <laughs> oh look, some mold. I then proceeded to pull out the drawers, all of them except for the last one because I wasn't in the mood for horror music music right now. I released the remaining dust mites that were trapped in there. Be free little ones. Go forth and multiply. Sadly, the shelves aren't removable. Slight obstacle, but I'll work around them. I did eventually have to remove the bottom drawer and be serenaded. Let's all be serenaded together. So beautiful. Thank you for this moment. The inside of the drawers are all lined with this wonderful aquamarine velveteen. I don't mind it, especially because I really don't want to gut it and have to reupholster everything. That's a little above my pay grade. Honestly, it's not in bad shape. We're keeping it. The aquamarine velveteen is here to stay, whether I like it or not. But something that cannot stay are these floral doorknobs. They're just little pegs, so you can pull them out pretty easily. Just kidding. Spoke too soon. These knobs are really knobbed in there. I had to pull out my heavy-duty pliers for this. I obviously know what I'm doing. Even with the pliers, it was a bit of a struggle. The double doors have this gold chicken wire in them. I see what grandma was going for, but it's just not the vibe I'm going for. So I had to get rid of those as well. The chicken wire left a mark. I did my best to try and scrape out the remnants by sanding it down, but some of it still got left behind. I even went around and sanded the whole thing to help alleviate some of that floral eyesore, and also just to help the paint stick better. At some point, I decided I didn't want to have to look at the marigolds anymore, so I'm just covering them up with a couple layers of white. Paint likes to seep into wood, so right now I'm trying to prime it with some gesso. I needed to build up a few layers to really bury that flower garden, so I did go in with white paint to help with that. I knew the shelves would be annoying to paint, and they were. I had to really angle my brush to get in between them. I even tried to get underneath the shelves. 
left no stone unturned. I ended up painting the entire inside white, except for the very back panel, just to make everything look more cohesive. I mean, no one's looking inside, especially once the drawers will be tucked in, but I just thought it would look more finished this way. And of course, how could I forget the armoire's underbelly? I'm not planning on leaving this part white, but I figured I'd still give it the attention it deserves. There's still a few knobs left to deal with, and I dealt with them swiftly. I was scared the drawers would just break in half during this whole ordeal. It took a lot of strength to force them out. All the strength that Rar Babe could muster. Now that the knobs are out of the way, I cleaned up the drawers. A fresh coat of white paint. I found a matching aquamarine color. It looks pretty close to the color of the velveteen lining. This is going to be another modern spooky makeover. It's mostly going to be black and white with a pop of color. Kinda like Sniffledorf's furniture set. Except, aquamarine is the pop of color this time. Modern spooky doesn't always have to be mostly black and white, it just works with the idea that I have for this music box. So yeah, I'm painting the inside drawers a nice aquamarine. Only the front side of them though. The other sides I'm planning on leaving white. Some of the paint does get underneath the drawer. I don't want the bottoms to be painted, I feel like they provide a nice contrast, so I'm planning on cleaning them up with acetone later at the end. I'm not planning on keeping the whole thing white, that would be kinda boring. My idea for this piece is lines. Last time I did stripes, this time I'm doing lines. Trying to shake things up a bit. I was trying to plan everything out in pencil first. I've been really into spiders recently. If you're scared of spiders, spider web, spiders, 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 spider egg sacks, pulling a sack of spiders at you, spiders, baby spider, spiders, spiders, Spider Man costume or something. The little spiders are cute. He's a demonic spider. They're so cute. Look at him. Look at him. I mean, come on. I did just decorate my door covered in spiders for Halloween, but that wasn't enough for me. <laughs> I'm still going strong with the whole spider theme, so here I'm trying to sketch out a spider web. It might not look like a traditional spider web. I'm going for more of a funky, geometric spider web look. It's not meant to look symmetrical. It's meant to be kind of chaotic and imperfect. I did this on purpose. It's part of my vision. Oh, hi, Sniffledorf. He still refuses to leave this music box alone. I'm thinking maybe Grandma had a cat or something that left its scent on the music box. He's never like this with any other furniture or anything. It's weird. If you're new here and you've ever seen a grandma before, any old person, let's just make it easy on you. If you've ever seen one of them before, you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. It might look random, but I actually did a lot of sketching and erasing, and more sketching, and more erasing. I was on a quest to create the most perfect, imperfect spider web. In reality, though, I just settled for this. I think it still looks pretty cool. The true horror is yet to unfold. But for now, more spiders to go around. You'd think I could make a straight line with a ruler, but you're wrong. Some of them are a little wonky. That's alright. I'll fix it later. Don't look at them. It's rude to stare. There's quite a few touch-ups to do, but overall, it's not so bad so far. It's a start. You can see that one's kind of thick. Did you see that thick line there? All right, time to get serious. Oh, the horror. I wanted nice, crisp lines, unlike my spider web. So I started taping things up very carefully. Slow and steady wins the race. Oops. It's not as easy as I make it look. The trim is going to be black. I feel like it kinda had to be black so the spider webs had something to blend into on the edge. Otherwise, they're just kinda floating in space. No one likes a flying spider web. I kept getting some paint on the back of the music box. I wasn't even gonna mess with the bottom. That's just gonna be all black. No one's gonna be looking down there anyway. I probably should have taped these edges up, but instead I decided to freehand it. I think I got it pretty good though. That takes skill. More skill than I have, but I'm doing my best. The inside's always the most difficult part. I had already painted it white, but I thought if the black just ended so abruptly it would look, well, too abrupt. So I'm painting the bottom black, or trying to at least. Remember the horrors I talked about unfolding? Well, they've arrived. This is a spider stencil I ordered on Etsy. It was the only spider stencil I could find that had sort of small spiders. I thought these looked pretty Cute. I could of course paint these spiders myself, they're very simple, but I wanted all the spiders to be the exact same size. I thought it would make everything look nice and professional and sleek and modern. So I laid the stencil down and started painting some aquamarine spiders. Alright, not too bad. It's kinda cool. Spider number two. 
Looks like he's lost a bit of weight. Looking a little spindly. Okay. Not too bad though. Spider number three. Okay. Spider number four. Oh no. It's fine, it's fine. How I managed to paint outside the lines while using a stencil, I don't know. Sadly, number four wasn't the last of my troubles. Did I just ruin this whole thing? Possibly. <gasps> Quite possibly. I would probably have been better off if I had just painted the spiders myself and skipped the stencil entirely. I just never imagined it would go this mm. wrong. With the chicken wire gone, the windows were looking a bit bare. Definitely needed to fill those back up with something. I thought spider webs would look nice in the windows and tie the front together with the rest of the box. It was hard finding spider webs that would fit these dimensions, but I looked online and saw that Joann's had these ones available that would fit pretty closely. They were only available at like one of the Joann's though, which happened to be like an hour away. So that was a fun trip. They're almost a perfect fit. I just needed to snip off the tips. But first I'm gonna have to paint them black. Snip, snip, snip. I hot glued them in. Actually went a little overboard with the hot glue bit, but it's fine. It just peels right off. I did want to put glass inside the front of the spider webs to give it a nicer finish, but Home Depot doesn't cut glass, so never mind. Scratch that idea. I can live without it. At this point, I remembered I have to acetone the bottom of the drawers. I realized that was looking a bit of a mess, so I'm cleaning that up as best as I can. The drawers are looking nice, but there's still something missing. Knobs. Some of them are coming back. Is that my hair? The gold doesn't fit the theme though, so I painted those black to fit in. Speaking of fitting in, I had trouble pulling them out, and now I'm having trouble putting them back in. It took some convincing and the help of my old rusty hammer. You've been a good friend, and that's it was thick and thin. The flower knobs on the front are out of commission. They're fired. Instead, I'll be replacing them with thumbtacks. I had some on hand that I thought would do the trick. I made some alterations and then hot glued them on. But they didn't want to stay, so I ended up going back with some stronger glue. E6000 did the trick. I put everything in its place. It looks pretty cool, but I thought the front looked a little plain. A bit boring. It needs something. There's too much white space. I didn't want any more spiders or spider webs. Just something simple to accent it. I ended up painting some of the trim black just to break up that white space a little bit. After that, I had a whole bunch of touch-ups to do. A little bit of varnishing, and it's done. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm a little disappointed with the spider stencil. Things got a little gloopy and out of hand, but I did touch-ups and made them look slightly more presentable. The imperfections add character. If you don't want to end up like spider number 25, you should click on the top right or bottom left. This is for your own good.